Welcome to Item Breakdown, a series where I analyze every single item in Mario Maker 2, go over their properties, and find interesting ways to use them in our own levels. This video is all about the Master Sword. The Master Sword is an item type asset exclusive to the Super Mario Bros. game style. While technically just a variant of the Super Mushroom, the sheer volume of unique interactions this power-up enables justifies its own video. To start, the Master Sword is stationary, although it is affected by gravity. If Mario collects the Master Sword, he will transform into Link. Like ordinary Mario, Link is only one tile tall and cannot break brick blocks. However, like Super Mario, Link can absorb one instance of damage before reverting back to small Mario. Link has a whole new roster of moves, which can be found in the Mario's Moves section of Yamamara's Dojo. These new moves include swinging his sword, a dash attack, a down thrust, shooting arrows, summoning bombs, and raising his shield. Link swings his sword in the direction he is facing by pressing Y. The sword extends one tile in front of him and interacts with many different items and enemies. Link's sword is able to collect all types of coins, knock up other power-ups, P-switches, and springs, as well as activate the following blocks you see here on screen. Link's sword attack is able to defeat most enemies in the game. The damage it deals is equivalent to that of a thrown shell, defeating Bowser in 7 hits. Enemies that aren't outright defeated by a sword attack are bob which are ignited, spike balls, which knock Link away, and any enemy in a shell, which are knocked upwards and retreat back into their shell. Enemies that are not affected by a sword attack at all are the Angry Sun, Boo, Lava Bubble, Muncher, and Thwomp. Link can perform a dash attack by first holding down, and then pressing Y at the same time. Link begins to charge up in place before swiftly dashing forward in the direction he's facing. Link is unable to change directions while dashing, either manually or by sideways spring. He is able to jump though, each jump being Mario's max height jump of 5 blocks. Running into any solid objects or boss-like enemies will cancel his dash, and he will be knocked backwards. Anything that comes into contact with Link's sword while he is charging his dash, or while dashing, is affected the same way as it would be from a normal sword attack. The only exceptions to this is that when Link is dashing, his sword now outright defeats bob and shelled enemies. Every other terrain, item, enemy, and gizmo interaction remains unchanged. Link can perform a down thrust by pressing down while in the air. Similar to ground pounds in New Super Mario Bros. U or 3D World, Link hovers in the air for a short moment before traveling downwards at a high speed. This move can also be cancelled and resumed in quick succession to perform air stalls just like with ground pounds. The down thrust interacts with other objects the same way a dash attack would, activating the same blocks and defeating the same enemies. The only exceptions to this is that it suppresses chain chomp posts, doesn't defeat dry bones for some reason, and causes Link to bounce up in the air after hitting a spike ball. Pressing and holding any of the trigger buttons will cause Link to ready his bow, shooting an arrow once the trigger button is released. Link can still move left or right and jump normally, but is unable to run or change the direction he is facing while his bow is out. Link normally fires his bow directly in front of him, but can change the angle at which he fires an arrow by either holding up or down. Link can shoot a maximum of two arrows per second. Link's arrows defeat most enemies in the game. The damage it deals is equivalent to that of Fire Mario's fireballs, defeating Bowser in 20 hits. Enemies that aren't outright defeated are bob which are ignited and knocked forward a little bit, and Wigglers, which become angry. Enemies that aren't affected by Link's arrows at all can be seen here. Arrows can also activate POW blocks, P-switches, and on-off switches, as well as collect every kind of coin. Link can summon a bomb by first holding up, and then pressing Y at the same time. He can then either throw the bomb forward by releasing Y, or drop it by holding down and then releasing Y. So, standard item grabbing stuff. 
although Link isn't able to pick his bomb back up after releasing it. Link can only have one bomb out at a time, and can only summon one while standing on a solid object, grabbed by a swinging claw, or riding in a Koopa Clown car. While in the latter, summoning a bomb simply drops it below the vehicle, and the clown car looks very pleased when doing so. Link's bomb will explode about 4 seconds after being summoned. In almost every way, Link's bomb is just like a bob -omb. It has the same explosion radius, as well as destroys and activates the same blocks. The difference here is that Link's bomb deals more damage, only taking 4 hits to defeat Bowser as opposed to 7, and they are not considered projectiles. They only damage enemies through their explosions, not from initial contact. Link raises his shield by pressing down while standing on a solid object. Link cannot move with his shield raised, but is able to change which direction he's facing by pressing either left or right. With his shield raised, Link blocks damage from almost every enemy and projectile in the game, bouncing away most enemies that come into contact with the shield. I won't list them all here, but this includes things like lava bubbles, munchers, and even King Koopa himself. Some enemies blocked by the shield will be defeated outright, such as bonsai bills, bullet bills, cannonballs, fish bones, and Lakitu. Damage sources that cannot be blocked by Link's shield are seen here on screen. Blocking an enemy that is part of an enemy stack will cause that enemy to fall out of the stack. Aside from the moveset, while Mario is cosplaying as Link, various sounds and music tracks are changed as well, such as touching the flagpole, Touching the axe And dying The light bulb sound effect is also replaced with the puzzle solving jingle other placeable sound effect changes are as follows. Finally, entire course themes are replaced as well. Switching gears over to the Master Sword power-up itself, which has two modifications, winged and parachuting. A winged Master Sword moves left, rising and falling one tile off of its horizontal axis as it moves. A parachuting Master Sword descends slowly towards the bottom of the screen, and, say it with me, resumes its basic behavior when it lands. The Master Sword can be placed inside blocks, pipes, and bullet bill blasters. In a pipe, it will emerge one at a time, the pipe refusing to spawn a second while the first is still loaded. In a bullet bill blaster, it is launched about two and a half tiles forward, or about seven tiles from a red bullet bill blaster. Just like with pipes, it will not launch another until the first is no longer loaded. The Master Sword and a Koopa Clown Car will pilot the vehicle toward Mario, and one in a Lakitu's Cloud will pilot the cloud on a horizontal plane. The Master Sword can be placed on a track, moving at a medium speed, or a fast speed if winged. The Master Sword falls much more slowly through liquids, and is not destroyed by lava or poison. Now getting back to Link. Link's bombs travel a bit slower in water, and are blown up instantly upon contact with lava or poison. Link's arrows are totally unaffected by water, however they disappear upon contact with lava or poison. Link's down thrust cannot be performed underwater, and entering water while down thrusting will cancel the move. Link's dash while underwater is much slower, although it seems to be the fastest way to travel horizontally through water in SMB1. However, jumping while in or jumping into water while dashing cancels the move. 
While inside a Goomba Shoe or Drybones shell, Link is unable to use any of his unique moveset. Not even swing his sword. Link is able to wear a Buzzy Beetle or Spiny Shelmet and still utilize his entire moveset though, so that's a plus. The Master Sword also has a clear condition, requiring the player to reach the goal as Link. In the Night Ground theme, Link's bombs will walk forward after they land. In the Night, Airship, and Sky themes, Link's arrows are unaffected by low gravity. However, his bombs are. In the Night, Desert theme, neither arrows or bombs are affected by the wind. However, Link's dash is. And while moving with the wind at his back, Link can dash much faster than any enemy or projectile in the game. So, now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? The Master Sword has spawned tons of fresh, fun, and interesting levels single-handedly. So how do we, as creators, not only add to that pool of levels, but stand out in it? Well, I think the most important thing with an item of this caliber is to understand just exactly how it works. Knowing the moves the player can perform with it, and all the different interactions it has with the rest of the objects in game, gives us the power to create something truly unique. And look at that! You just learned everything there is to know about it. I guess my work here is done. That's just the tip of the sword for this ultimate blade. If you're looking- Okay. Maybe it's not that simple. The magnitude of this power-up means a multitude of different scenarios in which it can be used. While it's not exactly something to just drop into any level, it's certainly something that can be utilized in any kind of level. That's why, instead of trying to fit every possible use for the Master Sword in here, I'm going to be focusing on a few different kinds of levels, and showing examples to get my point across. Starting with traditional. Designing a traditional level around the Master Sword might seem easy at first glance, but can actually get pretty complicated. While Link can easily dispose of enemies in his path, one small slip and he's back to regular, boring old Mario. This problem could be solved by providing tons of Master Sword power-ups frequently throughout the stage, but that doesn't feel very traditional to me. My solution was to create a level with multiple branching paths all leading to the same place, enabling both Mario and Link to reach the goal, while still maintaining a fun and interesting challenge for both. Also, plenty of secrets, and even an optimized speedrunning path, which was no easy feat. I present to you, Bog Voyage. Right off the bat, the player is given a Master Sword, but more subtly, the player is also given a choice. Do they hack and slash their way across the bridge, swim through the Goomba-infested waters, or take their chances atop the trees? It's important to make sure the player doesn't feel like they're trying to figure out where to go, just deciding how they approach getting there. I feel like I've achieved this by ensuring each alternate route is visible at any given moment. The player can also change which path they take at any time. For instance, if they happen to lose their Master Sword power up here, while the bridge is now much more dangerous, they can drop down into the water and swim underneath it. Also, because this is a level somewhat centered around Link, there are small puzzles scattered about for the player to ponder. Hey, traditional levels are known to have some puzzle elements as well. Staying on the topic of puzzle, how about designing an entire puzzle level around the Master Sword? There are tons of different ways to go about this, because there are tons of different things Link is able to do. We can create a puzzle where we have to throw bombs into certain areas in order to lower bullet bill blasters. Or maybe a section where the only way to activate a POW block is shooting an arrow at it, but this is only made possible once an on-off switch is triggered. Point is, there's an unlimited amount of possibilities with this power-up. The key thing to keep in mind when designing a good Link puzzle is that the Master Sword should be given out like candy. Link always has the chance of blowing himself up with his own bombs, and you wouldn't want a player to get softlocked in one of your sections just because you were stingy with the swords. Speaking of bombs, make sure you place your destructible blocks strategically. Link has the power to destroy these at a moment's notice so make sure the blocks he can destroy are intentional or just unimportant. Finally, let's talk about Kaizo levels. The Master Sword has added an entirely new breed of difficult courses. If you thought this was hard, imagine having to shoot arrows and summon bombs at just the right time as well. 
With an entirely new moveset to design around, Kaizo creators will have a great time torturing Link with ever-precise gauntlets of horror. Here's a level I've been toying around with since the update, which, uh, I'll come up with a better name later. Link must guide this spike ball through tight corridors, using it to his advantage to traverse across large gaps. On the way, he must shoot arrows, slash enemies, and even smash through stumps in order to catch up to his spiky companion. And that's just the legend of this adept dagger. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out another one of these item breakdowns. A huge thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for making this series possible, and I'll see you in the next one.